you ready? Oh, this is gonna be good. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's switch over. There we go. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Oh, I'm so, so freaking excited. The end of the war. To the end of a dream. Here we go. There's a couple of small things that I want to do first. I just want to make sure that this is going to go well. First off, that's not what I meant. I meant units. We're going to have 12 here. Don't want that. So. Oh, that. There. That'll make this easier. I'm gonna go with Uritza, Mercedes, Alois on the Professor. And I'm going to Shamir to be paired for Nadetta. Another big thing is I believe we got this done last time. Okay, good. Launch your battalions! It gives you, it's kind enough to give you a reminder usually since this transitions straight into this from the second chapter. I kind of forgot that there was no stopping point. But also, it may be beneficial to check and make sure that you don't have anybody who got a very subtle level up or something like that at the very end of the last chapter that you want to go and get. We do not appear to have any of that happen. There we go. Check your unit's inventory. Just repair, forge, do anything. You are not coming back to this. So get done what you need to get done. I'll keep an eye I'll keep an eye on the black sand steel. We're gonna see just what needs to be repaired, what can be forged, and then we'll distribute that even. I'm going to go through everything. We are making all the preparations that we can possibly possibly make. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Now I'm a little closer to the mic. It should pick me, pick me up better. Okay. Brave sword. Quite nice. Only takes boot steel. Not many other characters are using brave weapons, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to forge this. Oh my gosh, it's scared that... Yes, you're supposed to stop. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's scared that... It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> so... I'm using the underside of like... Well, I have, like, a loft bed. Because... I don't know how to put this. Kind of tall. <laughs> um, I frequently hit my head on it, so I just have a pool noodle. So that if I do so happen to hit my head on it, and occasionally if you see me, like, Wiggling around like that, it's occasionally because I'm putting it back up. It just fell down and like basically gave me a light tap on the back and I freaked out for a second. <laughs> oh, that scared me. Okay. I forgot to do that. That's probably the most important of them. Um, what I was going to say before I got the heebie-jeebies scared out of me. <laughs> That's not the right word, but whatever. Is your hero's relics. Fix them! Do not go into this battle with broken heroes relics. That's uh not a not a pleasant thing to do, believe me. 
If you like using your hero's relics on those monsters in the previous battle, fix that. That's all I can say. Mirror's looking good, and I don't think we are using hero's relics for anybody else. So I'll go back in. Uh, you know what? We'll just we'll go through the repair first before we forge. Any of your valuable weapons, just use them. Like if you have anything where you're like, uh, well, I was kind of saving it because I, I want to make sure that I have it for... This is the final battle. Use it. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Like you see the Spare of Asol and the Crescent Sickle? I will be using those. There's no reason for me not to. I'm not going to use the Spear of Asol for like Tempest Lance or anything like that. But... I mean, 11, 14 at 80 versus 14 at 85 with a crit of 10 and effectiveness against horses and the same weight. Like, there's literally no reason for him not to be using the Spear of, Ace, uh, the Spear of Azel. I'm going to be, of course, double-checking a bunch of stuff as well just to make sure that everybody has the rare weapons that they can use. Um, forge... And forge. Please tell me that you have a Wodap Plus. You do not have a Wodap Plus. Son of a... I'm trading your Wodap Plus with the... Uh, your Wodap with the... Professor's Wodap. Well And you're getting the killer boat plus. And that one also takes time. Dang it. Okay. Whew. Does it actually increase any? Oh, okay, it does increase it up to 40. Okay, so I can do 15 combats with this if I initiate in combat and I strike twice. That's what your Garthium is for, my friends. Okay. Now let's go in and let's check inventories. One, you're trading. I still want you to have a Wodow, but you're going to be mostly using the Rapier, so I want Petra to have the Wodow Plus. Um, I'm also going to give her your... Brave Sword for the simple fact that I want her to have options. You're set, you're good. Don't know why you have the Venom Lance, but sure. Okay, we're gonna have you whip the Silver Bow just to make sure that I don't forget. Um, same thing goes... We should actually make sure that everybody has the right thing equipped as well. Um, yep, yep. You don't need the Knowledge Gem anymore, so we can trade that for something more useful. Such as... The... Um... Magic Staff, yeah. Accuracy in the Silver Bow, you don't need a Bullion anymore. Okay, we should also check those items too. But uh, you could be using the silver sword to start. We'll switch over to Brave or Wodow if it's if there's anything that like basically you can't one shot. Um sure you can hold those, I guess. There's no reason for you to have anything other than that staff. Um the silver gauntlets plus, perfect. Silver Lance plus and the Spear of Asol. I don't think we have anything other, any other special items basically to give to people. But the axe of Zoltan, but I don't think anybody can really use that besides Caspar. But he already has better weapons, and we don't have any sort of special bows besides maybe some turn to a Parthia, which we can't do. You're, you're, you need a A plus professor level in order to do that. Okay. Um. Abilities. Let's check everybody's abilities. You have Lethality. Advantage. That's all that I need. 
Okay, you're looking good with your crits and stuff like that. It's unfortunate that you're going into here still as an advanced class, but so so be it. Uh, that's something that we have to accept. Um, that's why I went through and I just was like, you know what? Everybody's getting their Master Seal stuff, and she just didn't. She only got to like 27% chance, I think, so I couldn't even do it. Life Taker, and that's it. Honestly, that's that's all you have, and that's really all you need. Um, close counter, good. Oh, hit. Um, that's all good. Lethality, Axe Breaker, Vantage, and Alert Stance, and Lethality. I think I said Lethality twice. Um, I would have liked Alert Stance Plus, which would have been what happens if we got um, up to A plus flying. Um, and unfortunately it didn't happen. I was too ambitious to try to get too many things done. Same thing with Edelgard. Um, just, just, barely too, just barely too slow on getting everything done. Um, alert Stance Plus is literally just Alert Stance... Gaining 15 avoid plus wait, uh, whenever waiting, um, but better. I believe it gives 30 avoid. Or 20, something like that. It, either way, it's better. Um, see this axe breaker? Uh, <laughs> you can just blow. Renewal and Miracle. Uh, you don't need unarmed combat. I gave you enough gauntlets so that you could literally initiate combat and attack four times against every single unit on this map. And you would still be able to walk away without using unarmed combat. Um, honestly, you don't have much. Your, your big thing is your class. Crit plus 20 and Fist Fair. That's all that we need for you. We unfortunately didn't master... Actually... I don't know how close you are to class mass. Oh, well, that's not how you check it. Um, whatever. It, we'll keep that off on the off chance that he does master his class because that gives him an overpowered skill, which will 100% help throughout the map. Um, and he's not going to be using axe prowess anyway, so. He just weight minus three sword breaker. I think that's all good. Honestly, you weren't using your axe. Take seal speed. Hopefully you can do something with it. And you really don't have much of anything. You have Miracle. Um, I guess we can give you Battalion Renewal. I don't know. Um, we might switch around your Battalion. High enough to use sort of Magic Core. Empire Magic users. Um, two. Yeah, perfect. Great. Use those. They're your friends now. Don't let them die. I'm going to want to use them. Uh, everybody needs to have a good gambit. Um, unfortunately, flying units tend to not have the greatest of gambits. Um, but you, you, want, you want good gambits. Uh, Multi-use stuff, stuff that hits large amounts, just anything that anything that's going to hit a large area, and or multi-use. The, the fact that I can use two assemblies is going to be like the one saving grace with this Empire uh, Elite Wyvern company. Um, everybody's the right class. We checked out items with the exception of all of these. I'm still not using the sacred stuff. Sacred stuff is staying. Um, but yes, I have forgotten about literally every single like stat increasing item up to this point, and we're going to use them, and it's going to make everything a lot better. Starting off with Ferdinand, who's going to get every single strength and defense increasing item you have ever seen. Strength. Yes, take it. Um, instead of your steel axe, because you weren't using an axe. Strength plus one. Yes, please. Dex, Charm, Res, Defense, yes please. 
boy. Go. Another defense. Fuck. Um, that's not what we need. Dex. Magic. Strength. That's the sacred. That's sacred. Max HP by five. Um, sure. You're a tank. And you know what? Let's get your decks up too. I know this. This is HP. I'm doing that too. X by one. Take it. He's just going to get all the stuff, because he's meant to be a frontline unit, and currently he has not been proven that he can be a frontline unit. Dex by two, please. I need you to actually, one, hit stuff, and two, hit stuff hard. And you have not been proving that you can do that. Okay, that's everything. Um, speed. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Okay, time to get you all of your items back. Um, Silver Sword Plus. Or Plus. Brave Sword. What else? Plus. I feel like I also had something else here. Oh yeah, you also had a ring. Um, speed ring, right? No, it was a March ring. Yes, yes, yes. And then now we give you everything that is speedy. I would have liked to give you everything that was dex, but I needed Ferdinand to not be terrible. And besides, your dex is... Overall, I think the grand total dex that it gave him is... Like, plus six, basically. And that means an extra 1% chance, I think... Yeah, that would be an extra 1% chance of lethality proccing. So it's not that big of a deal in the end. Charm. Distance. Luck. Nope. Speed wing. I need you to be invincible. Got that? And this will help you. Magic by two. Okay, that's not what we need. Two. The Merciless. Real nice sword. However, we are not using it. Charm by two. This is going to go towards people who I really want using um, a big uh, gambits. You are not using a big gambit, my friend. Sorry. Um, I want you to be a little bit... Thank you. Uh, not you. That'll go towards someone else. However, you will be taking this magic. Okay, all that we have left is luck, res, and charm. Honestly, I think all those are just going to go to Edelgard. Okay, there we go. And then, like I said, I'm not using the sacred stuff because the sacred stuff makes you absolutely overpowered. <laughs> um, maybe the stat increasing items aren't exactly overpowered. Just HP by seven and then strength and speed by three. That's still incredibly powerful, but maybe that's not as powerful as increasing movement by two. If I gave this to Petra, she would able to almost be able to... Yeah, she would be able to basically uh, almost one turn this final battle. That's how ridiculous giving extra movement is. Okay. Sorry, I sped through all that. I am super freaking hyped for this. 
That's it. That is everything. Save. And here we go. To the end of a dream. It's so awful to see the kingdom capital go up in flames. But at least we made it this far. We finally stand before the palace. These flames will kill our friends and foes alike. Those who stand in our way will perish with the flames. Immaculate one, your reign ends here and now. With fire raging all over the city, our enemies won't be able to advance in large numbers. Instead, they may try to defeat us with small squads of elite warriors. Indeed, I suspect as much. And at their head is the one who stole my mother from me, and likely that mutinous whelp, Edelgard. The whole city's burning! Oh, this isn't good. I'm flammable, you know? If possible, we must be avoiding the flame and be careful of strong enemies. If we want to minimize our losses, we will need to be flexible in our approach. Here we go. Let's begin. Yes, the city is on fire. There, anywhere where there's this fiery floor, you will take 15% of your maximum HP as damage per turn. But you stand on it. it. Will occur at the start of every turn. There are many breakable walls allowing you to access different areas from different sides. And in general, a lot of this stuff is fairly straight. Straight forward from that point. Charge forward. Charge ahead. Use the day. Let's start with our first big obstacle. Chevalier. An altered golem with a piercing light lance. A light lance that has 15 to crit, 90 to hit, and 21 might with a weight of 1. These golems boast a barrier that reduces damage by 50%. Vital defense, making critical hits impossible, and still boasting luck after their, uh, my brain just stopped working, after their barrier is broken. Anti-magic armor, making it so that as long as the barrier is up on a tile, that tile cannot take magic damage. They have three health bars. After the first one is broken, they get Swordbreaker Plus. Anybody using a sword against them will have... 30 less hit, and these guys will gain 30 more hit against them. And then, after losing yet another one, they will add an extra 5 to their attack. Fortunately, they don't hit terribly hard, despite the fact that the intimidating 21 might would lead you to believe it's only 52 attack. Unfortunately, this is magic attack, and do keep magic attack, so do keep that in mind. I will jump up to 57 magic attack in their final stage. They only have 10 attack speed, despite the fact that the weight is one. So there's not too much to worry about in terms of getting double. Just make sure that you don't send your tank out there with low resilience. They will not be taking damage from the fire, unlike what most humans would do, as they are not human. They also have seal speed, which is going to be the one thing that you may need to watch out for if you send a unit that is slightly slower out there. Over here, we have a different altered golem. Each and every armored golem on this field is different. This one's name is Iris. It has very similar effects, but the big thing is going to be the individual skills and the lance that they are using. That will change. As well as some other stats, but it's going to be very minor differences. For the most part, they have the same archetype of high magic, high res, some decent luck, a little below average speed, and kind of everything else is just relatively the same. Iris has the Throwing Light Lance, a range of 1 to 4, a might of 15, and a crit of 15. Not going to hit terribly hard, but can hit you from basically anywhere, so you might want to look out for that. Same sort of effects with the barrier and the health. As for this one's individual skills, this one's going to have Seal Res. 
So if you initiate, so if you go into combat more than once, keep in mind you're, you will be taking six extra damage compared to previously. This one is Wilhelm, having the piercing light lance as well, and having seal movement, inflicting move minus one. Not seemingly a huge effect out in the open. Keep in mind that you cannot move as quickly while on a fiery floor. While it's not specifically said in the, in the description, it is similar to that of deserts in which it slows your movement, even if you are a caster. The only one who it does not affect is flyers. Over here we have Luca, a throwing light lance as well, with seal strength as their individual skill. Over here we have Gyges, with a piercing light lance and armored blow as their individual skill, granting extra defense whenever they initiate combat. And that covers all of the golems. Let us actually begin the battle now, shall we? As mentioned before, it is magic, so I will be sending a magic tank up there, who better than the Crit Lord himself, who also has terrain nullification. Meaning, nullifies damage from terrain. He can stand on the fiery floor all he wants. Don't mean much to him. The big thing is we need to get close enough in order to enable everyone to go quite simply use a physical attack or a gambit or anything along those lines. I'm electing to keep both Ferdinand and Petra there as they both have either a wide AoE gambit such as Blaze or a multiple use gambit such as Assembly. In this case, you will not reap any of the rewards of destroying all of the armor. Similar to the last battle, there's nothing you can really do with it. Last battle, there you could do some slight things. Maybe you had that one weapon you wanted to forge at, at the start of this battle. But from this point onwards, there's no point. Your only goal should be taking out the enemy. I will prepare. You can break one shield and just wreak havoc on that one tile. Do it. You don't have... Yeah, that's what I thought. You don't have terrain nullification. Okay. Leading the charge here. Well, one, you, if we approach too closely. But we mostly need to be on the lookout for these four up front. We got tanks. What's my strategy? I do this for all of us. I miss I appear to have miscalculated. That's fine. For the Empire. You know what? You can sit there. You'll fine. You'll be fine. Three untapped units. Seems right to me. than you, buddy. Still hurt, but nowhere near as much as it could have hurt. Now with that, you're weak to lances. How convenient. I so happen to have one right here.
You'll step back so that you don't start your next turn on there. See, no point in doing that. Still have no ability to crit, it appears. That may just simply be because that's a low crit area. Or low crit magic. We'll go with this. Ah, lethality. Perfect. Oh, my luck is already looking good here. And I shall stand here. Oh, you can probably still take him out at the very end. Um, you, as long as you use... Apparently none of these. Shall go with wind. Mm, no crit. Okay. Oh yeah, also that's their, uh, yeah, magic tag might have 23, making it a 54 staggering blow, um, at least for Chevalier here, and uh, foe, foe's hit will suffer res minus 5 for one turn, and it has a massive AoE, so try not to die. It's not exactly in the most pleasant of spots right now, however... More fighting. So be it. Winning is what matters. Let's begin the charge ahead, shall we? here. I'll use nothing yet. No heals yet. Ah! Nice. seems to have affected the doll's movements. Whenever the Immaculate One howls, those dolls become stronger. How much stronger do you... Well, let's see. Magic plus two. Speed plus three. Distance plus two. Magic plus two, defense plus two, res plus two. Magic plus two, speed plus three, defense plus two. I think you're getting the pattern here. It's just a few different stats that are boosted by two or three. And while at the very beginning it may just seem like, oh, it's just a minor stat buff, it adds up. Don't let her do it again. Or someone would be prepared to face... A really beefy doll. 
Also, I gotta poke you with the stick again. You see, now that one, that one hurt a bit more. Now I'm going to heal you. Thank you. Your healing is not quite as effective as I would like it to be, unfortunately, due to the fact that the uh, Holy Knight is actually slightly more offensive, but you still have the heals to get stuff done. Alrighty, buddy. Time to die. Down goes Chevalier. Let's see. What's your hit rate? During Lance, you have 128. Um, I have 68. And I outspeed you by a ton. I'm willing to take these odds. Okay. units over here that are going to be nice and deal with. You know what else I see? I see a giant doll using a piercing spear instead of a throwing one. Also, can't really walk downstairs all that easily. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to punish that. There is nothing about it. And keep her on lower health because we can and I feel like it however I will use physic on Ferdinand here just to get him up a little bit higher on health Leave it to me. perfect plus magic Hurts, but it's not like I can't deal with it. Look at that, zero percent hit chance. Trying, buddy? I don't think you are. Oh yeah, I think you also had a Volinary in your inventory. Oh, that's fine. Here we go. Slow way across the fire. The easiest way for most of these units is going to be to dismount. They will actually move faster while on their feet, even though they will take slight disadvantages to certain stats, such as defense. Ferdinand here takes a hit to his defense. 
Um, mo most units are going to take a hit to their defense and their movement when dismounted. However, um, moving on cavalry um, actually has greater disadvantages when faced when they're disadvantaged. So, changing back to infantry for just a couple turns to move through the fire is not a bad idea. I do this for all of us. Look. Look. There we go. There we go. Come on, huh? 0% hit chance. Hit chance, huh? Uh, um, yeah, how's that going for you? Um, let's see. That's going to be about it. I'm basically just going to stall for a minute. I don't want to step on the fire if I don't have to. Down goes one. Strength, dex, and speed, that's all that I need. Or literally everything, that works too. actually unfortunate. Well, that hurts a bit. That being said, though, I don't care terribly much, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna hurt. They never had terrain resistance to start with, though. Um, don't take Linhart off because he loses his terrain resistance, if I recall correctly. I don't know, I might test this just for one turn. Thank you. That may be stupid. Nope, oh, he still has it. Never mind. I stand corrected. Yeah, we're just gonna deal with that. That's what you get for standing in their way. Oh, smite! No, we we aren't. We don't need to use smite. Wait. Uh, at the current moment, this gets her seventy-six avoid. Uh, and with this, uh, you have a one hundred six to hit. So have fun with that. You want to know the good part about going and just slowly chipping away at this guy's health? He's not going to attack. And for those who don't quite understand what that means, it means that they will never go... So they have to alternate between standard attacks and staggering attacks. Only a staggering attack is going to actually go um, and repair their shields. So if they never attack, they can never then switch to a staggering attack. If the staggering attack is executed, then will they recover their shields. But they have to do a standard attack in order to transition into the staggering attack and step out of range. And they never get to attack you, they can't even transition into the stagger attack phase. So it doesn't even give them a chance. Ah, yes. Wind sweep. Unfortunately, I did not rearrange my combat arts to allow that. But wind sweep is um, an interesting skill. Um, it means that you attack once using, I believe, <laughs> it's either three or five. I don't fully remember. Um, you use an extra amount of uh, weapon durability in order to do basically a standard attack that 
the opponent cannot counterattack. Doesn't matter what skills they have, they cannot counterattack it. They just kind of sit there and take it. I could use a meteor, but eh. 55, what's your res at? 37, what's your res at? 32. Oh wait, we'll wait one more turn just to make sure that we can truly go and get rid of him this turn and not die by the other units. Oh, well, none of them are really going to provide much of a threat. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll still wait one more turn. Have fun with your low hit chance. Really? That seriously hit? I had, I had a 21% chance. Here we go. There comes the buffs. What do we got this time? Oh, I didn't even discuss Bernard. I just realized that. Uh, throwing Light Lance, Warding Blow, initi uh, initiate combat to get res plus 6. Um, we have actually not seen that on literally anybody. Um, it's not exactly the most common of skills. Um, resistance is now reinforced by 4, Dex is reinforced by 10, and Speed is reinforced by 6. You're weak to swords, however, which means that I get to simply walk up and go... Maybe, maybe with some heals. Thank you. I will you know what? No, I, I was about to say, you know what? Let's try... But the Silver Sword is going to hit the hardest, so I don't know why I was looking for anything. Right. Yeah. The Brave Sword would get the kill, but that's not what we're going for here. We're just simply going for a shield break. Step back to there. Oh, right. You. No, actually, you don't. Never mind. Not in this phase, you don't. 66% chance. I don't like that. Like the fact that I have a 70 in your. Oh, yes, because of uh, Lance Prowess. Yes, 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 yes. I was still thinking of your staggering blow. Which is not. That, that ain't it. Like to mount. We are actually not going to attack you this. I prefer not to have you have that extra hit chance at the current moment. Um, we're going to spend yet another. Physic. I need to move over by one square, excuse me. There we go. There we go. And that's fine. That's that's that makes me a bit more confident. Right? Oh now you're going for him. Okay. Um been a mistake. Not to we're sitting there. We can Deal with that when the time comes, I guess. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Who needs you to go this way? Fatal Guard, you head over. You two should be enough. Handle that. Yeah, you'll be enough.
Thunder. And my friend. Your defense has grown immensely. It has been boosted by 10, I presume? No, by 4. Alright, because you have the piercing lines, not the throwing lines. However, that does not matter to me. Silver gauntlets have 33, or uh, silver gauntlets have 18. I mean, that would, if I got both, that would be 60 each time. However, still doing it twice here would still guarantee that I would have enough. Let's go with this. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Not a single one? Not not even one. Okay, um... No. <laughs> no. No. Not happening. Uh, that's... That's why we save our divine pulses. What's my strategy? What's your hit and odds, buddy? 124... Versus 66. Well, hmm. We'll stick here for one turn. It's gonna be about a better hunker down turn. I don't like this. But if Aegis procs were good, it did not. This is a ah yes, I forgot. Dying animations don't actually work when you're dismounted. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. That's a bit awkward. Okay, time for something a bit different this time. I'll cut a bloody path. How about this? Oh, we're just staying here. Straight up vibing. Ready for there is nothing you can do about this, my friend. I do this for all of us. That. We're just chilling there for a moment. And that's this turn. I mean, oof, ouch, my face, but you're gonna die next turn, so. There is nothing you can do about it. See, you ready? Boom, there goes one. Let's see, what can we do here? Oh, yep, there you go, that would work. Um, how about Hubert?
Hmm. Ah, you got your speed boosted, didn't you? Yes, by six. That's why nothing was working. Death has a 15% chance of crit. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Only, okay, well, I was going to say 8% chance. It's payback for death. Go back. I will prepare. Take a look at something. So if you're going to roll an 8 on that, that means that no matter what happens, that 8's going to disappear if I go to a different combat. I do this for all of us. At your service. How about an Esferatu? There we go. Oh, okay, Burner. Okay, Burner Data. Okay. Down goes Wilhelm. Someone's going to attack me. Ah, I see. Put me in there. But no. Hmm. How about that? How about more fighting? I doubt. I sit here with thunder, and I smack you in the face with a meteor. Well, then if you come down here, you can only land one hit before you die. For the Empire. Vibe there for a moment. Oh yes, and then also... Death. I am nearing my limit. There we go. You can now chill for a moment, Petra. Your job is done for the moment. Here we go. Not nine health. Are you kidding me? That wasn't enough? Fine. Go hold Thoron. How about that? My yeah, back to... In there. You go there. More if you go here, we have you hold. Let's see, it was 17, and you're gonna deal. You're gonna sit there and hold 21. Yeah, it looks like Thoron will be the right move here. Or. Thoron. will deal exactly enough to you. Just letting you know. I will prevail. I am nearing my limit.
Okay, here we go. A measly nine health. Good, and then you should miss. Perfect. That's fine. Strength, magic, and speed. Perfect. What's my strategy? This. That'll do. Not quite exactly how I want it to, but... It won't work exactly how I want it to, regardless. Um, 53... to 104. Still anti-magic, right? That I established that correctly? Yes, I did. Okay, then. Next turn. Someone from back here. Ragnar. Oh, uh, you have the throwing light lance. See, I see, I see. No, nope, wait, nope, that's not you. No, it's not you. Not you up there either. So you back me if I do that. Really, Ragnarok boy can get me? What's the range on that thing? Two, yeah. Five. Oh, you also have bolting. I seem to have forgotten about that. Coin flip dead eye. Uh, don't like that at the present moment. Like this. A tragic end. And I don't want to use Thor on there, I wish to use Thunder. It's win or die. How about a curve shot? That works for me. Okay, Caspar, this is what we needed to do. We needed to crit. That's basically it. You make crit. Me feel safe. You crit with this, buddy? You're good. You're set. Ooh. That will get you exactly 51. That's all I needed to do. I just needed to crit. Done. Might makes right. Amazing. And he's out of the range of fire. I just realized the moment that I said that he's standing in fire. So he's not, not out of the range of that kind of fire. He's not in combat range. He'll sit here another turn. Buffing yourselves. I'm awake. I'm gonna have you go and give a 
should say heal to Ferdinand. Okay, next turn. Hurts, it sucks. We can still deal with it. Couple golems left on the field. This is uh, this one's gonna be tough. Magic's been boosted by six, speed has been reinforced by nine, and defense by six as well. However, yes, lethality can proc on gambits. I don't know if I mentioned that before or not, but yes, it can. Probably not the most exciting of effects, but it works, does it not? I see. No, I should do it. Just a standard attack like this should do it. Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. Now, with your terrain resistance, you don't have to worry about much. We'll go ahead and we'll dismount. here first. I want to keep an eye out on you two for now on. Can't pull back yet. Darn bolting. You're obnoxious, do you know that? Oh, noxious you are. Go heal. Just go here and heal. Stay. I believe you lot are ready to move on to the next one. I'll get to you when we get to you. Ah, because I'm just barely too far for you. That's fine. I can accommodate. I should just go over here and dismount. I'll cut a bloody path. But... Okay. Um, again, still some slightly slower turns, a little bit of turtling. I know, I apologize. But this needs to be done. And that's to prevent you from turtling. That's about what I expected. Hurts, but it's fine. Hmm, so you're running around. Really consider that wise. One shot. Hello, my friend. Could I interest you in a crit? No hesitation. 
a crit that heals me 27 HP. No time for Down goes the golem. I also got a knight over there. You know what? Come after me, you dumb dumb. What you got? 24? 12. That's it. You got a mere 36 attack with that bolting. And you can't even double. Have at you. Not immediate. I don't like that I don't deal enough damage to you. We're gonna go and do this. Definitely want to be careful about this. I do like that I double though. That's fine. Only thorns left on this rose. That means that I won't die, at least by the night alone. I'm growing. Oh. Ah, I see. We'll see how that goes. We can readjust accordingly. Unfortunately for you, I have the fire spell. You actually hit. I'm impressed. No heals for you. Witness Bridget Pride. I believe this is about all that I can do at this point. Let's hope it works. Okay, of all the ways for that strategy to fail, that's not what I expected. Okay. In that case, we need to adjust accordingly. You melee are throwing. You're throwing. You've got a tomahawk. Oh, which means that you have a hit of 90. I'm going to sit here. Do a very Dorothea thing. Sit here and look pretty. Uh, you come and attack me, and then. I go and. Get the crap out of you. <laughs> because I'm using magic. And just to make sure that it works. There you go. At your service. Put me in there. 
specifically going to have you simply yeah. sit here and healing focus, and you're going to deal with one or two flyers as they come up. I'm awake. Again, unfortunately for you, I have fire. And you Today I was lucky. are both standing in and are incredibly weak to said fire. Flame spirit protect me. Ready for anything. I'll cut a bloody path. Here we go. Without a proc, perfect. It's all the easier. No use. You actually went for Petra. Of all the people you could have gone for with bolting, you went for Petra. The one you quite literally had the lowest chance of hit against. Nice job. Nice. Nice job. Perfect. Okay. Now we can maneuver a little bit more. As long as we survived that initial advance, I was feeling okay about it. Um, specifically because I now have knowledge that you can only move one space and you're a melee attacker, so I don't have to worry too much about you. But you know what, let's just highlight your space. So I can do a tiny little retreat and just take care of the flyers. Oh yeah, remember, uh, remember I gave Mercedes a gambit? This was more or less what it was for. I wasn't going to have her fight any of the golems. I don't know how to worry about them for this turn. They're just going to chill there. And Kaspar is going to punch a Pegasus Knight. Good. Amazing. And fortunately, it's not me. Now we continue to push forward. I believe it's probably better if we stay off of our horses. But simply for the better. I can do that. I can. Since that range completely enveloped, that's completely in. Actually, I'll still keep it there. On the off chance that I press B and then. You know, who's... I'm gonna do this. Have you move over. There. Coming for you, buddy. Only have so many uses of bolting. Just letting you know. Uh, come at me if you want to. Oh, see so you change your target. Ho ho ho. When it suddenly dropped below 20%, you were suddenly not okay with it. Okay. What's my strategy? Sit there and win. That's your strategy, my friend. Okay, next turn. Perfect. Perfect. Hmm. 
that actually hit. Unfortunate. There goes another roar. The last two golems on the field get buffed. They could be quite formidable. However, there is a chance in which we don't actually need to go and defeat. Reminder that the only objective is defeat the enemy commander. Only need to beat Saras. That's it. Not sure if this will work well. Never mind, it'll work. I will pour everything into this battle. My body, my soul. Thunderbrand rumbles, urging me on. I am the goddess's servant. You will taste my blade. <laughs> Now, four fifty four. Go with fifty four, and it worked. Lady Rhea, my service ends here. It's been an honor. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot to do something. Uh, sorry, Hubert. Sorry, Catherine, we're gonna have to, uh, can we, can we do that one more time? Catherine. Swordmaster of the Church of Seras, wielding the Thunderbrand, in a, an item that is obtainable by you. Thunderbrand is only, only able to be wielded by those who hold the Crest of Charon. A crest that... No one... Our party appears to hold. So it will not be useful for us here. However, if you so happen to recruit someone from a different house with the with the ability to use it, by all means, let them have it. Swordmaster means that you have very high crit, attack, and avoid. Credible attacking speed. Basically, don't let her get close to you. Take her out from afar using, well, as I've shown you, mages. Um, Swordmaster is a class that we have not exactly seen uh, outside of her back or even the war arc began, so let's go over her abilities again. She takes five less damage when no battalion is assigned or if battalion endurance is zero. She will not be benefiting from that as she has a battalion. Swordfare grants attack plus 5 when using a sword, and she gains an extra 10 crit when using a sword. These are always in effect due to the fact that she is, well, always using a sword. Same thing with Sword Avoid plus 20. The big thing that you got to look out for is if her 63 attack is already not incredibly high, when initiating combat, not only will she tr strike twice due to Thunderbrand, but she will be granted Strength plus 6, making her attack 69, which, as I said, will be... Sh will be striking you twice, possibly four times if you somehow survive the first two due to her 43 attack speed. For her Majesty. Now I'm going to take my own advice. There we go. Lady Rhea. And there we go. Life Taker kicks in. No more, no more need to heal. I will prevail. No, I don't like your bolting, mister. I quite simply don't. What am I going to do about it? This. Cease. Each battle a victory. And now no more bolting. At your service. I'll do this for all of us. I'll do this. I'll do this in a way that I like. Which is going to be curved shot for this guy. I'll get through this. 
and Nosferatu for you. Now we can progress. Going to attack me, a knight. Twenty attack speed versus sixteen. No one's gonna double, but that's good. In terms of a defensive sort of thing. Good that we don't get doubled. Um, twenty-four versus thirty-nine. Um, you're going to hit me from afar. That's fine by me. Is this the final act? Not yet, Dorothea. Not. White, yeah. I'll have you use the culinary just to keep your HP a little bit higher. But Ready for you aren't dying anytime soon. That's for sure. For the Empire. What's my strategy? Well, it appears we're gonna have to deal with this, so let's go over everybody, shall we? Actually, no. We don't have to. We can save them. I... Oh, never mind. I think I'm okay, because that was my most recent move. Yes, yes, it was. What's my strategy? We don't need to do that. We actually didn't even have a single reason to come over here. I can head back. Go ahead, chase me if you want. I did state previously that I was going to cause the lowest amount of deaths possible to our students. Still going to stand by that. Annette and Ash can be saved. Simply don't go to the left side of the map. That's all there is to it. But if you want to try attack Edelgard, be my guest. That I wouldn't really work too well now, would it? To probably go and get you off of that. Yeah, um. Yeah, if Deadeye's not gonna work, then we'll At your service. stay as is. Don't wanna use. I don't want to use something I don't have to, so I, I'm going to try not to use Fortify. Oh, you can move, can't you? Um, I shouldn't strain myself. Put me in there. Okay, I'm thinking it may just be best to do this. Don't try and stop me. Might makes right. Perfect. Step back just a little bit. We won't use Meteor. Not yet. Catch everybody up top here. There are still chests on this map. They can't have stuff that's good for you. However, as per usual, I'm going to choose not really to use I want you to step a little closer. So I'm going to taunt you. Linhart here. Because you only have 48 attack, and he has, well, let's see, 42 uh, resilience. So. I think I'm gonna. I, th I think he'll live. Something tells me he'll live. Actually, I probably could have done that, because that's. Oh no, that's Rally Magic, not Rally Res. Yep, never mind. Rally Magic will do nothing. And to have units one, that's Linhart. There we go. 
Perfect. Getting stronger. Good. Works for me. Don't run, you coward. Oh no, six damage. Oh no. And you pushing forward. And you there, my friend. You need to stop running. Just accept the fact that Kaspar is going to win. Stick the ease. The quicker you come to accept the fact that Kaspar will win, the easier it is. Just. <laughs> the quicker you accept that Bernadetta is absolutely amazing, the easier life gets in general. <laughs> Physic. Or a tiny heal for someone. Sure, Ferdinand. Back to the fray. Because you have massive amounts of white magic to use, and I haven't been using them. Um, again, it's probably just better for everyone to stay off their horses at this point. Everything's on fire. Hello there, my friend. Would you be interested in a gambit? Actually, hold on. Let me double check your stuff real quick. I know you're weak to axes, so that's why I would have to use the gambit. You're sitting at 17 attack speed, which means... 24. 24. You know what that means. That means we double, my friends. Okay, can't quite do it with Ferdinand. I was going to be very happy if I can do it with Ferdinand. No one else to target me. That's fine. We don't need Meyer. We need Miasma. Yeah, that works. Also, it's targeted on her. Who cares if it's a 100% chance? Get up close and personal all I want. Cutting Gale crits, that's literally the perfect amount. However, if wind crits, it's still going to work. We'll just use a wind. Because it works. Oh wait, no. Hold on, I miscalculated. Oh, that's fine. Well, well, it'll be fine. I don't care. For a second, I was like, ooh, I should rewind that and I should fix that. I should use Cutting Gale because I know it would crit. It doesn't matter. It still, would, it still would take another turn. He's scooching everybody forward. I'll... Pile is back by one, I guess. There you go. Go have fun with Violet or something. I don't know. Up next is going to be Gilbert. He's not one of our students, so I have opted to go and fight him instead of Annette and or Ash. They prefer to keep those two alive as opposed to Gilbert. Gilbert's a fortress knight through and through, so what does that have to do except far more underwhelming. Um, he has lower protection, roughly the same attack speed, roughly the same avoid, um, lower attack, lower hit, lower crit. 
The only thing that's super special about him is going to be his personal ability and one other thing, which I will talk about in a second. Um, unit takes two less damage while in a formation with a battalion. That. Um, he has both Pav Eyes and Aegis, so he has a 23% chance, lower than to do, of having any damage. Um, Keen Intuition is going to be the big thing that you need to look out for, um, as it does actually grant a Void plus 30 when in combat with units that are two or more spaces away. Um, so if you're trying to snipe him from halfway across the map with an archer, he will actually dodge, believe it or not. Um, however, if you're up close and personal with him, he still has a low enough avoid that uh, that only makes his avoid 45, which is about average with many of these. So you can just stand here with Dorothea and go bye bye. I would, I cannot yield. Wait. I will fulfill my duty, even if I must forfeit my life. I was trusted to protect the future of the nation, the royal bloodline itself. I cannot yield. I will fulfill my duty, even if I must forfeit my life. There we go. And forfeit you will. Oh, it actually missed. Wow. Impressive. Shame if you got completely and utterly destroyed by a healer at point blank range. With the weakest spell in the game. to you. I could not. Goodbye, Gilbert. Don't worry, Father. I will protect the capital and the whole kingdom. No, you won't. You're gonna sit there and not die. Okay, we've already moved those two. And now it's time for this. The roar, what did it do? Nothing terribly much. It boosts your decks by a ton. <laughs> that's that's uh that's one heck of a crit rate you got there. Um so I'm gonna go. How am I going to do this? What's my crit rate for death? 13%. And your crit rate for literally anything? 15%, so it's slightly higher. Okay, I'm gonna go... Cutting Gale, just so that it's equipped. I know it's not needed for this right now. There we go, we get a skill up and a level up. I think I'm improving. Magic and speed. Very nice. Reason level four. Yeah, it's it's nothing terribly much. Okay. Or final little thing. Well I'm gonna go and hope that death. Fritz. Of course. Okay. And how much was your chance to crit? 18. Good to know. I will. I will be changing that. Uh, some means. I don't know exactly how. Um. Remain cautious. Ah yes. Through this, because I can. Like, 36 damage triple to 108 when you only have 87. Have fun. What, you thought I needed lethality to one-shot you? <laughs> nah.
the approach. An S-Blade we do not have, but basically it grants extra avoid upon being used. Uh, not quite as good as Wind Sleep, which flat out right makes the enemy unable to counterattack, but still pretty nice. There they are. Let's be careful. Definitely don't want you to get completely destroyed by those. And I specifically need to look out for Annette. I'm not going to come into contact with really any of you all over here. I may come into contact with you, but that's not that big of a deal. I can do this in a way that'll that'll work. Okay, Cyril has a brave axe. If he initiates combat, he's going to be attacking twice. He is a wyvern lord and is actually quite good as an enemy wyvern lord, as uh, you can tell by his attack speed and his avoid alongside his 58 attack with a brave axe. However, that's about where his good points end. Um, similar to how he would be if you recruit him in another path as a player character, he falls short. Um, he's very... He's, with a protection of 33, he's still going to suffer from archers if they're able to get past his 75 avoid. Um, his personal ability does nothing. Um, the only thing that you really need to look out for is... So the Axe Crit, the axe crit and the Axe Avoid are always active. Same thing with the Axe Fair. Avoid is always active. Canto, stuff like that. Basically, Keen Intuition, it makes his Avoid 110. Or not 110, just 105. Instead of 75, if you're attacking from two or more spaces away. However... Who cares? Because, as I mentioned, he falls short. Like, his accuracy is, a, is 110. So I'm going to walk over with my silver sword. And we're going to take a look at something. My void is 70, silver sword. Keep that in mind. Now, if I were to wait, I would gain a Void plus 15. Which I actually think that I'm going to do. I'm going to go and walk over heal, here, and heal. I'm combining too many words into one. I'm going to walk over heal. <laughs> I guess that kind of works. You consider, like, a walk over heal, a like, this sort of action. I guess it works. I'm going to sit here with the Silver Sword and simply taunt you. Sit here with my 85 Avoid. You're going to have fun with your 24 chance to hit, and you're going to have fun with your 25 chance to hit with Assembly. And I'm going to sit there and laugh while you see it, nothing. What's my strategy? You can sit there. Because let's take a look. Okay, you can actually do that. Ah, uh, because you're the one who's actually in line with it. I see, I see, I see. What if I did this? I guess I could bolt them on you. Let's just go... put you over here. And... 
What are they going to do? 27. What am I going to do? Uh, add 26 to my 55. Right? Yeah, so add 26. That's going to be 81. Minus 27. And does that come out to be 50, or 49 or higher? Yes. Yes, it does. I do this for all of us. In other words, Bernadette has got this. Ready for anything. There for the final remaining. Why? I know just the thing. Oh, look at that. You actually have a chance of 30. Wow. The prediction didn't calculate that in. Doesn't matter. You are in my way. Yep, bye. <laughs> is such a good unit. Such a good character, too. Like, just in general, just... Hmm. Oh, look at that. Didn't even take a single point of damage. Fear me. This thing. And then we go and we use a Thoron. How about that? And no more Falcon Flyers. Or Pegasus Knights. Ready? I can take another I can take another step forward, you ready? Do do. And just go ahead and use curve shot and buy. Okay, really? I do this for all of us. Okay, so I apparently need something greater than eighty. There we go. A little scratch won't stop me. We push forward. Push forward a little bit more. What's my strategy? Um, I'll be fine. I will prevail. Oh, what? You want me to do it with the world out? I can do it with the world out. I had like a grounder, a fifty-one percent chance. Oh, how about a bane of monsters with a fifty-six? Or we can just attack twice. However, that requires me to crit twice. Let's just go with the Bane of Monsters. Oh, we even got a lethality. We didn't even need to. Goodbye, Cyril. See what I mean by he was kind of lacking? Seems impressive, but in the end falls flat. On his face. And here we are, approaching I'm awake. the end. Ready for anything. Matt, I'm going to suggest that you stop moving if you wish to live. Your roars mean nothing. That golem can't touch me. More fighting. At your service. Hmm. 
Wait, can I actually... Oh, wait, no, it's the fences. I was like, wait. Okay, let's move up one more. Okay, and next turn, battle begins. True battle begins. Be careful, Annette. Alrighty, here we go. The Immaculate One, the Dragon Seros, is a giant creature. The only one that we have seen in this playthrough. The only other time that you can see a creature of this size in the Crimson Flower Root is if you let Dudu transform. He uses the Crest Stone of Seros, boasting 15 might in a range of 1 to 5. The hit of 80. Dragon Scale Wall reduces 70% of damage on any tiles that the barrier is still intact. Vital Defense makes critical hits impossible, and an incredibly high luck makes it incredibly difficult to still get a crit even after the barrier has been removed. Giant Wings grant an extra 30 avoid against Sword, Lance, and Axe users. Saros has 4 health bars. After her first health bar is taken, Death Blow. After her second health bar, Magic Bind making it so that if she lands a hit, the targeted foe is unable to use magic for one turn. And then finally, on the final health bar, Wrath. If foe initiates combat while unit's HP is less than or equal to 50%, grants crit plus 50. She also has Sacred Power. Adjacent allies will deal 3 extra damage and take 3 less damage during combat. Ancient Dragon Wrath. Calculates damage using the lower of foe's defense or res, or excuse me, protection or resilience. Ancient Dragon Skin has all damage taken, negates some abilities from combat arts, and prevents unit from being moved. And of course, counterattack. As if you could easily counterattack from. As if the 5 range on her weapon does not allow to her. To counterattack anything already, she has a special ability to ensure it. She's not going down without a fight. However, nor are we. Notice one thing in particular about this? There was nothing stating that you could not use magic. You are free to use magic. As you please. Funny movements. Is this? Perfect. I will mount here. Okay. I won't let you take Ferdi out. I'll defend this place with my very life. That I don't wish to kill you. Don't make me do it. Have a warp. And I think I'm going to...
If you can land a gambit directly in the center with something along the lines of Resonant Lightning or Resonant Flames, you can hit all squares. It ain't much. Dragon skin and the barrier will reduce almost all damage taken. However, still got some tricks up our sleeves. Here's what I may have to do. I may have to go and use a gambit on Annette. I'm sure she doesn't go. Uh, she wields the Crusher. The magic weapon deals magic damage. Also an axe. Your scariest ability. Black magic range plus one. Don't be fooled. Excalibur, Wind, and Cutting Gale normally only have a range of 1 to 2. It's now 1 to 3. Sorry, Annette. I don't want to do this. Put the plan into action. Okay. I did at least someone somewhat want to do that. This will reset the hit or thing. It's unfortunate. She will almost instantaneously delete any battalion that she hits. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I don't want to kill you, Annette. Shoot. Okay. Um, I may have to. I don't want to, but I think I may have to. I I can't redo this battle. I'm not going to redo this battle. Sorry, Annette. Sorry. That's a death that could have been avoided. I... I wasn't fast enough. For the Empire. I... I quite, I quite simply was not fast enough to do it. I... I'll cut a bloody path. <sighs> shit. I'm sorry, Annette. But I can't afford to lose here. Still. 
I will not let down my guard. I will prevail. I do this for all of us. Oh, don't want to deal with that. I don't think anybody else can really get close enough. I want to, I want to go and get rid of this right at the start, specifically, so that all my other units can get close and start wreaking havoc. Once you step into range, you should pretty much be prepared to go and delete her in one turn. You need to have everything that you possibly can. You need to throw anything and everything you've got. Let's hope we win this coin toss. Marvel at our strategy. Good. Here we go. Umbral steel times ten. We have it, not that we'll ever use it. Now... We let him have it. What's my strategy? Not yet. Not you, not yet. At your service. You are not going to get over there fast enough. I really wanted to show off your abilities. Rather unfortunate, but I'll deal with it nonetheless. Up there. Here we go. Two health bars have been depleted. Or was that one? I do not recall. Yep, two health bars have been depleted. I had it right the first time. Okay, now here comes the hardest part. Ash starts moving, so be it. That doesn't matter. You need to kill her on this turn. If you reach this point, she dies here and now. Why does she need to die here and now? Well, one, all of your units are now in range and very likely cannot get out of range. And she will annihilate every single one of them. Two, if you somehow let her attack, Aurora Breath will just delete you. Flat out right. All foes are rattled. Plain and simple. And it will hit everybody. I'm awake. Uh, I really wanted Edelgard to be closer. Could work. Keep that in mind. Something that's not going to let you go in double. Fortunately, the only thing that I see for that is Thunder or Sagitte. Thunder leaves me with a higher chance of not getting hit. Good. Thirty five percent chance. 
Unfortunate. I'll just barely leave you alive. I can work with that, though. If I crit twice, that is. We can do this, we can figure this out. Okay. The final health bar. 143 health. this crits. If this crits, battle ends with us as the victors. And with that, the war ends as well. Let's do this. That's how it's done. When humanity stands strong and people reach out for each other, there's no need for gods. Your reign of tyranny is over.
A rising flame was alight as the flow of time carved a new history for Fulvan. With the fall of Ferdiad, the holy kingdom of Fargus and the church of Seros both vanished into the people's memories. Fodlan was finally one unified nation, under the rule of Emperor Edelgard and the Adrestine Empire. Embracing her newfound power, Edelgard could at last set about destroying Fodlan's entrenched system of nobility and rebuild a world free from the tyranny of crests and status. Yet, beneath the surface, an unseen and silent struggle began to take shape. From her seat of power, Edelgard could at last wage war on those who slither in the dark. The war is over. But this... Only the beginning. Complain, complain, complain! What is it now? You are a fool! Just standing there and acting nonchalant! Have you already forgotten about me? You said you were going to vanish. I also said I would always be with you. But perhaps you would have preferred it if I had vanished without a trace. <laughs> you were alone. And so I chose to come back to this world to stay with you. was lonely. I know, I know. Keep back your tears. You have me now. And I must say that you have done quite well. Of course you have. I chose to join our souls because I have great faith in you. And yet I must admit I did not know you would achieve so much. To think you could have died so early on. That was a close call, wasn't it? And that is all you have to say? You are impossible to stir. But all is well that ends so well. <laughs> is that not what they say? Since you're here, I want you to have this. But I must ask, for whom? My pocket. I see. Or, no, I take it back. You are not making any sense. Could it be that my own feelings were somehow influential? But when I think about it like that, I can't help but feel that... That... I'm so in love, I should make an eternal vow. Really love me that much? What? Oh, I... Uh, were you... eavesdropping? Oh, fine. I shall admit... I do. I love you deeply. Overwhelmingly. Passionately. Ours is a love without an end. And so, I guess I shall accept that ring of yours. You will? Indeed. It's only right, for you and I are joined within our souls. And that is much the same as marriage, don't you think? The stone within your chest, it is no more. That means it is within your very soul that I exist.
And so? Whatever are you waiting for? Um, how... How do I, uh... all that matters not a ring the two of us are one for now and ever i hope you are aware of that in sickness and in health and come what may i shall be deep within your heart i i love you and i can feel the warmth of love from you as well i love you too from me the day you die I'll follow you we shall journey as one until the end of time <laughs> I never tire of being around you since we could not trade words for far too long I have much that I wish to say to you I know just where to start do you recall what we spoke of before I have told you not to let your guard down. Honestly, I adore you, but you could be so childish. And there we go. Thus marks the end of our run to the Crimson Flower Route of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Quite an eventful end, quite an exciting end. Man, I love this game. This game is this game is so good. And technically, we've only seen, like, two-fifths of what it has to offer. Maybe more like one-third. One-third if you count DLC. Two-fifths if you aren't counting DLC. Man, this game is so good. <laughs> I freaking love this game. Oh, man. So, like I have said... There are three other paths. There's one in which you side with the church, one in which you side with the kingdom of Fargus, and one in which you side with the Alliance. In order to reach the church route, you must replay through the start of the Black Eagles route again and choose to fight Edelgard instead of save her. Which is the other two routes you, of course, simply start off in their houses. Man, this game is so good. I love the art, I love the gameplay, I love the music. It's just... Oh, it's so good. It is so freaking good. I cannot say that enough. This is... I love Fire Emblem. I love Fire Emblem. I love Fire Emblem. <laughs> and here we go. We get to see some interesting stuff. Every single character that we have recruited to our side as a post-game story. Um, as for those who didn't do anything, like Anna here, I won't be reading them, but for the 10 that were significant to us, that remained in our party, we, I will be reading them. I'll leave it on screen for just a minute, so if you wish to read them yourself, you are welcome to. You're welcome to pause, take a screenshot, do whatever.
Here we go. Once those who slither in the dark were finally defeated, Zed is left home and opened a small orphanage in the Vargas region with her mother. After many years of kind service raising children who had lost their families, she received a letter bearing familiar handwriting. Its author, prisoner in Enbar, expressed his sincerest well wishes to Mercedes and her family. Still more time until no more time passed until one day the man who wrote the letter paid her a visit. With a joyful tear in her tear, tears in her eyes, Mercedes smiled, took Camille by the hand, and at last Welcome to Mill. 100 battles and 63 victories for Mercedes. Battles meaning times that they were in combat. Victories means number of killing blows obtained. In recognition of his achievements during the war, Kaspar was given the title of Minister of Military Affairs in the new Adrestian Empire. Through his command, though his command developed a rep for occasional recklessness, proved an able leader, guiding his troops to overcome countless obstacles. Personal life, he began to... Okay, I... I was reading that. Patrick returned to her homeland of Bridget and inherited the throne from her grandfather. As ruler, she declared independence from Fodlan and renegotiated Bridget's diplomatic relationships on more terms. Next, she introduced industrial practices that were modeled on those of Fodlan, vastly improving her homeland's economy. This rapid development surprised those abroad until we discovered that the improvements came thanks to the Council of Pedro's husband, Hart, who had left Fodlan to offer Bridget his talent and insight. It is said that the couple maintained healthy and affectionate relations. Gosh dang it, I cannot read that fast. After the war, Bernadetta re <laughs> renounced her claim to House Varley. She married Ferdinand, the new Duke Iyer, and contributed to efforts by instituting reforms across the du their dukedom. Through the success of those policies, Ferdinand was offered the position of Prime Minister by the Emperor. He accepted, leaving management of the Iyer territory to his wife while he worked to apply their ideals to the Empire at large. Ferdinand did not like to leave home. Ferdinand's life involved a lot of travel to and from the capital, but it is always said that he embarked on his return home with a smile on his face. Ugh. As the new Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard gave all she had to breathe new life into the government of Foden. With tireless work, great sacrifice, and her devoted servant Hubert by her side, instituted new class reforms and helped to ensure the people's independence. Hubert was always close at hand, ready to dispose of any unsavory burdens by any means necessary. In the later years, they passed the fruits of their labor onto Edelgard's successor and vanished from the public eye. Though it is said they spent the rest of their lives together, it is unlikely they ever gave voice to the true depth of their affections. And us, with 325 battles and 165 victories. Wings of the Hegemon. Star fought alongside Edelgard to bring an end to the tyranny of a godlike being. Though he has, was wounded in the battle and lost the power of, his, of the progenitor god, he remained determined to walk in his destined path. With his legendary blade in hand, he will never stop standing against those who slither in the dark until Fodla knows peace at last. <sighs> I forgot how slow I read when I'm actually speaking out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Oh, well, this play. We did it. We won. We beat the war. Not a single one of our allies died. And with the exception of Annette, who I am terribly sorry that I had to unfortunately kill, almost all preventable deaths were prevented. Annette was the only student who died that we did not have to kill. I was unfortunately too slow to getting to the Immaculate One herself, and unfortunately had to kill Annette for the sake of the survival of the other students. I'm sorry. But, no one else died. All of our allies survived. We were able to see all of their end stories. 
I didn't get to read them all because holy cow, that moved fast. Um, <laughs> hopefully you got your screenshots. Um, I apologize if my head was in the way during the bottom part of the text. Um, I tried to read fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, several hundred battles across every single character that was in that ten, in, the, in those ten. The original ten from the house, ourselves, Edelgard, Hubert, Petra, Ferdinand, Dorothea, Caspar, Linhart, and Bernadetta. And then, decided to take Mercedes along. And those ten led us to victory. Led us to the unification of Fodlin, and the rise of the new Adrestian Empire. And quite happy reunion with Sothis herself. I hope I hope this was enjoyable. This game is... This game is an amazing game. Sorry, I'm trying not to, like, tear up. I mean, I am, but I'm trying not to. <laughs> this game has... like many others, brought so many people together. Not just limited to me and the people I know, but countless others. And that's honestly what I believe games should do. And it does such a good job. It makes me feel attached to all these characters. And <laughs> there's more than one reason why I try and keep everybody alive. I just... It's such a good job of creating an amazing story with amazing music and amazing art and just amazing gameplay to go along with it. It's just... It's amazing. And this game has, uh, again, like many others, made me so happy. And I am so happy I got to share it with everyone. So I hope... That through all my scuffness and weird memes and jokes and attempts to sound knowledgeable and <laughs> the inevitable failure to do so, um, I hope I hope that this was enjoyable for anyone who decided to tune in for for any part of it. And for those of you that did. And for all those of you who will in the future, um, as I attempt to work on getting VODs everywhere that I can, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope... That, through my love of the game, I could have either ignited a new passion 
A new enjoyment for Fire Emblem? Or maybe re-sparked an old one? I don't really know what else to say here, I'm sorry. <laughs> appear to have forgotten how long these credits are. Um, well then, uh, <laughs> let's see, what, what did I, what did I not talk about during the course of this game because of spoilers or for whatever I forgot or whatever reason, what did I not talk about? Man, I really can't actually think of much. Um... I believe that I said that Black Eagles was my first house before. Um, when I first picked up this game, Black Eagles was the first house that I decided to go with. And I absolutely loved it. Went through all the other routes. I'm still working on playing through everything on Maddening, and it is kicking my butt. Uh... <laughs> Maybe one day, if I'm bored, I'll boot up my own personal file and you'll get to see me struggle through the maddening stuff. Um... Um... But yeah, I, I, it was... When I, when I rolled those... When I rolled that d4, I was like... I was going to be happy... With... Literally whatever happened. I, this game is amazing and I love all the roots. They're all amazing. Um, they all have their ups and downs, of course, as anyone might expect, which I can probably go over now. Um, but I was going to be happy with any route that we got, and the fact that it was... Um, I, like I said, I would have been happy with anything. I wasn't expecting anything. I wasn't hoping for any one thing in particular. Um, but the fact that we got... The Black Eagles, once I walked away from that first stream, I felt really happy. I was like, man, it's just fated to be, huh? Like, it just... The fact that it worked out like that, the fact that my first route got to be the first route that I played for everyone. Um, I don't know if I'll be playing the other routes, but at the very least, it was... It still doesn't make it not the... That still makes it the first, you know? But, uh, it, it felt like fate for a minute. <laughs> I was like, man, I am... Clearly, this this was... <laughs> this role was meant to be. But, uh... I guess now with the game over, I can discuss a little bit of the other, other routes and ups and downs and stuff like that. So the other routes I have mentioned multiple times before. Um, Golden Deer route is going to be mostly character development. Or, excuse me, not character development, world development. You're going to learn a lot about the world, a lot about its history, a lot about politics of the world, things like that. The route with the Blue Lions is going to be a lot of character development. You're going to learn a lot about the characters in your party and those they interact with and their relationships and a lot of their personalities and growths and traumas and things like that. Um, the Black Eagles is a bit of both as we've seen. 
And the church is going to be a lot about the professor himself, or herself, or whichever you decide to be. And uh, as for the roots in terms of length, um, the Black Eagle's route is the shortest of all of the routes. Um, this is due to the fact that those who slither in the dark is simply removed to be in the background. Um, all the other routes actually have an active, like, player-controlled fight against those who slither in the dark. Second war begins um, within those paths. Which is a frustration to many people, and an understandable one at that, but I don't think that means that the Black Eagles route is any less enjoyable. I don't think that means... I don't think the Church route is any less enjoyable. I just... It's simply something to point out. But, with that, as it says on the screen... We have reached the end, or excuse me, we have gotten to the end of a dream. The war has ended, and we have seen our conclusion. And I thank you all for sharing this experience with me. Save, clear, save data. And with that, see a new title screen. Seltis now sits on her throne. And with this, I think I will end it here. Okay. Well then, the epic conclusion. All finished. It's, uh, it's a little hard to believe that that's going almost once every week, and here we are. We've reached the end. About one chapter a week, just about, with a couple's, couple spots here and there, which we chose to skip a week. But, uh... Yeah, we've reached the end. And I already gushed about it, so I'm just going to say thank you. I appreciate it. I'll leave it there. Oh no, not now. Not now, hookups. Please don't. Um, but yeah, um, I guess one small announcement. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be busy. Of course, there's Thanksgiving, which most Americans, I'm assuming, will be busy during because it's Thanksgiving, it's a holiday. We like food. Uh, who doesn't? <laughs> um, so there's that, but then I also have, you know, it's just going to be a very, very packed schedule for, you know, starting from tomorrow to. Basically, the new year. Um, so, my schedule may be a bit spotty. Um, I know for sure over the next few days, uh, it. I don't think there will be any streams. Um, but past that, I'll stream here and there whenever I can. Um, I got a lot of work to get done, but this is kind of how I relax at the end of the day. So, I'll keep trying to do this. That makes it sound like I'm going away forever. No, it's just, I'm just going to have a busy couple of weeks, that's all. Uh, like I said, I'll still keep it up. It, it just won't be 
it probably just won't be an everyday thing like it has been over the last little while. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll still be here, just maybe not every day. Maybe like I actually don't know. Don't don't. I, I'm not gonna say anything because then I'm gonna say something that I can't truly keep true. Uh, but basically, yes, my schedule may be a little bit more spotty. Streams may be a little bit more here and there uh, over the next couple weeks, but then after the new year, we should be back. Should be back on track. Um, but yeah, that's it for that announcement. Um, yeah. We've reached the end. The end of a dream. The epic conclusion. The war. Of the Black Eagle Strike Force. And Saros herself. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. If you enjoy what you saw. You want to see more. Follow the easiest way to let me know. Just click a little button that says hey. Like what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Um, it also allows you to get notifications. So if you're interested in catching me whenever I go live, there would be no more guesswork. But regardless of how you choose to show your support, from lurking in chat to chatting to following, regardless, I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And I hope you all have a wonderful day, night, morning, Afternoon, evening, whatever times it happens to be where you are. I hope to see you all later. Thank you for coming out. And glory to the Adrustian Empire!